So good afternoon, everyone. Um, I have nothing to disclose. So the outline of this topic, I would go over statistics, the human cost of diabetes, the financial cost of this global epidemic, and the strategies for effective management um, of this chronic disease, and a novel approach and treatment that maybe some of us are not uh, aware of. So diabetes is at a crisis level, and it's escalating. Every six seconds, someone somewhere dies from diabetes, accounting for 5.1 million deaths annually. That was the latest statistic from um, 2013. Imagine, 5.1 million deaths. Um, we, as healthcare providers, are tasked to effectively screen, prevent, manage, and treat this global epidemic. Like that slide says, there are 382 million people living with diabetes right now and a further 316 million people with impaired glucose tolerance are at high risk for this disease. If we don't do anything right now to prevent this increase, an alarming number, this alarming number would increase by 55%, a total of 592 million people will have diabetes by 2035. I think this is pretty evidenced by what the previous speakers have said, you know, pulmonary artery disease, coronary artery disease, renal failure, all, all of those things. So the most recent numbers released by the International Diabetes Federation show that a staggering 80% of people with diabetes live in low and middle income countries. So you can see over here, it used to be thought of as a Western problem, but if we look more closely, um, countries in the Middle East, Western Pacific, Sub-Saharan, Africa, and Southeast Asia, where economic development has transformed lifestyles, those are the emerging hotspots. These rapid transformations are bringing previously unheard of rates of obesity and diabetes. These developing countries are facing a firestorm of ill health with inadequate resources to protect their population. In human as well as financial terms, the burden of diabetes is enormous. Like I mentioned before, 5.1 million deaths. And it, it is estimated that by 2035, we would have spent $627 billion on treatment and management of diabetes. So like we previously mentioned before, diabetes causes a lot of complications. It's intertwined with the disease that we are talking about today, coronary artery disease, peripheral ar artery disease, stroke, um, renal failure, complications of pregnancy, increased susceptibility to other illnesses such as tuberculosis, um, malaria for, low, for um, less developed countries, and even depression. So how do we effectively manage diabetes? I'm gonna be talking about this in a global scale and then I'm gonna break it down to what we can do as practitioners, as clinicians, nurses, and technicians because we're at the forefront, we see the patients. First, it's essential to provide medications, technologies, and services to all people with diabetes, meaning medications such as insulin, oral hypoglycemics, um, a simple blood glucose monitoring, and also local community services to patients and their caregivers. Finding and treating diabetes early. This means um, screening patients who are at high risk and um, finding and treating complications early as well before they get to be in the hospital. Offer self-management education to all people with diabetes and their caregivers. This is at point of diagnoses. Implement nationally standardized protocols for identifying patients who are undiagnosed or who have high risk for developing diabetes. Now, the International Diabetes Federation, it's a worldwide umbrella, and they're trying to make it a global effort 
to have a national stand uh, for all countries to have a nationally standardized protocol. So all countries, not only the ones who are well off, also the low income, um, not so developed countries have all these um, protocols and guidelines and resources available for them. Increase global political recognition for diabetes management programs. The World Health Organization, together with the IDF, um, have formed task forces to help this in a global scale. And of course, continuing education for healthcare professionals. So here in America, we have, we have various organizations that recommend guidelines. Um, the American Diabetes Association, as of 2014, have recommended that Patients who are overweight, meaning a BMI or body mass index of more than 25 um, kilograms per meter squared, um, should be tested if they have one of the following risk factors. Physical inactivity, we saw that on a previous slide, sedentary lifestyle. First degree relative with diabetes. High risk race, these are African Americans, Latino, Hispanics, Native Americans, Asian Americans, and Pacific Islanders. Women who have delivered a baby greater than nine pounds or were diagnosed with gestational diabetes, um, people with hypertension and are overweight, people who have low high density lipoprotein cholesterol levels, that means less than 35, or uh, elevated triglyceride levels more than 25, at more than 250. Women with polycystic ovarian syndrome, A1C levels um, greater than or equal to 5.7%, impaired glucose tolerance or impaired fasting glucose on previous testing, and I'll go over that in the next slide. Um, other clinical conditions associated with insulin resistance, such as severe obesity or acanthosis nigricans, and patients with a history of CVD and are overweight should be tested, uh, should be screened for diabetes. So what is the criteria for diagnosis of diabetes? According to the American Diabetes Association, an A1C level of greater than or equal to 6.5% would make you diabetic. Or you can have a fasting plasma glucose of less uh, greater than or equal to 126 milligrams per deciliter, or a two hour plasma glucose test that's equal or greater than to 200 milligrams per deciliter, deciliter after an oral glucose tolerance test, or a random plasma glucose of greater than or equal to 200 milligrams per deciliter. The optimal management for diabetes. At diagnosis, we should start the patient on an oral hypoglycemic. Metformin or glucophage, if not contraindicated and if tolerated, is the preferred initial pharmacological agent for type 2 diabetes. In newly diagnosed type 2 diabetic patients with markedly symptomatic and or elevated blood glucose levels or A1C, we can add insulin therapy with or without additional agents from the outset as well. Um, of course, we can do a step-up approach. If you started the patient off with metformin and the A1C has not improved, uh, we, can, we can add insulin and add more agents accordingly. Um, this has been mentioned before um, with other speakers, the lifestyle management of what we can do um, to prevent coronary vascular disease, cholesterol levels, um, and the same thing with diabetes. Diet, exercise, weight loss. Smoking cessation will not necessarily lower your chances for diabetes, but it will just um, benefit your health. So many studies have demonstrated that weight loss improves glycemic control in overweight patients with diabetes. A moderate 5% weight loss of body weight um, will improve the action of insulin, decreasing your fasting blood glucose concentration, and of course, reducing the need for medications. And why is lowering your A1C, your sugar, so important? Lowering your A1C decreases the risk of diabetes-related complication. This study shows, um, this is an observational study, the United Kingdom Prospective Diabetes Study, um, of about 4,500 patients with type 2 diabetes, and results showed that each 1% reduction in updated mean A1C was associated with significant re reduction in 
peripheral vascular death risk of amputation, it went down by 43%. And that's just lowering your A1C by two year. And the same for mas microvascular complications, 37%. Risk of diabetes-related death, 21%. For us, risk of MI for our patients, 14%. And all-cost mortality, 14%. Next, I go to a novel therapy for treating this uh, costly, chronic, complex, and common disorder. So I'm not sure if you guys have heard about bariatric surgery. I had a patient um, who I saw, and she had previous PCIs. Um, she had coronary artery disease. And I saw her and she said that she used to have, she was obese, she had diabetes type two, she had gastric bypass over 10 years ago, and now she doesn't have diabetes anymore. And I said, oh, wow, does that really work? Which led me to look up more information and actually this has been going on for about 10, 20 years. Um, there's two types of bariatric surgery. They could do a gastric bypass and they could do the one, um, a gastric, um, sleeve procedure, laparoscopic or major surgery. Um, so because this is still being studied, I was very happy to see that the American Diabetic Association, Diabetes Association has released um, a position statement. And it says that uh, bariatric surgery has been shown to stabilize glycemia in about in approximately 55 to 95 percent of patients with diabetes, depending on the surgical procedure, gastric banding, bypass, or transposing or resecting sections of the small intestine because they work in different ways. Is it um, done with caloric, lowering the caloric intake, or having a malabsorptive um, surgery so you don't absorb as much nutrients? The ideal candidates for bariatric surgery are those patients with type 2 diabetes whose body mass index is more than 35 kilo, kilo, kilograms per meter squared, um, especially if diabetes is not controlled with lifestyle and pharmacological treatment. And patients with diabetes who have had bariatric surgery require lifelong lifestyle support and medical monitoring to combat vitamin and mineral deficiencies, especially for the malabsorptive ones, osteoporosis, and rarely severe hypoglycemia and insulin hypersecretion. Now, how about those patients who do not meet that criteria? Meaning less the, they're not more than 35 kilograms per meter, uh, morbidly obese. Um, small trials have shown glycemic benefits in patients with diabetes whose BMI is 30 to 35 kilograms per meter squared. The ADA do not recommend the surgery outside of research protocol. I think that's my talk. Thank you. Now for questions. Uh, okay. All right, for questions. Which statement about diabetes is false? The global prevalence of diabetes is decreasing. Diabetes is the seventh leading cause of death in the United States. Diabetes is the leading cause of blindness among persons ages to age 20 to 74. And diabetes is the leading cause of kidney failure. Okay. Answer is A, 87%. Um, bariatric surgery has been shown to stabilize glycemia in 55 to 95% of patients who have diabetes. These are for patients who are morbidly obese, more than 35 kilograms per meter squared. Um, a is through, B false. Very good. Thank you very much for your time.